Here are the 16 electrodes we extracted in the previous video. We are going to program all of them with just two different templates. One template will be used for electrodes with a flat top and the other for those with a shape top. While templates have been around for years, many programmers have been reluctant to use them due to the limited variety of applications they could be used for. In a short while, you will see how Symmetron is doing away with this limitation, allowing you to use templates for practically any range of geometries. Let's start with the first group of electrodes that have a flat top and apply the appropriate template to these electrodes. As you may recall, these are the very same electrodes that were made so quickly in the previous video. I have not made any additional files or done any additional preparation work for NC. Along with applying the template, we can also set some other useful options, such as automatically generating the NC setup sheet and G-code, or changing the orbit value. Now, we select the electrodes with shape top, which will be using the second template. While we don't need to make any changes here right now, I would like to point out that if any of these electrodes required a different orbit value, I could change this value with one keystroke inside each electrode. So now we are ready to calculate all 16 electrodes, which we can do in one batch. Obviously, we are not going to watch the calculation live since it would take a few minutes. The calculation time is incredibly fast since Symmetron is multi-threaded and will take advantage of multiple core processors. Now that the calculation is complete, the new NC files can be organized into a subfolder. Let's now review all the electrodes and see how well our two template types fit all of these different electrodes. Here is our first flat top electrode. We have the roughing procedure which leaves 40 thousandths of an inch on the walls and just 5 thousandths of an inch on the floors. Then a finished horizontal procedure finishing the flat top. Next, a quarter inch ball tool finishes the walls by spiraling down the electrode. And finally, the remachine procedures, which are capable of picking down to a 20 thousandths ball tool. However, since the smallest radius on the electrode was 1 32nd, the last two remachine procedures were not utilized. In the front view, you can see how the finished ball tool doesn't waste time waterfalling over the flat top, but rather engages closer to its tangent point. As the remachine tools get smaller, they don't go as deep into the clearance area. Now let's look at our first shape top electrode. The strategy is similar to the last electrode, with just a few minor differences. Here too, we start with roughing, but this template has a second rough procedure the same size as the finished tool. This would help clear any excess material, but since we don't need it on this electrode, we can simply delete it. I left the finished horizontal procedure here in case there was a large flat area but it can also be deleted at this point. The finished procedure cuts the top first with a parallel cut and then spirals down the walls of the electrode. You may notice that this electrode is quite tall. We obviously don't want to constantly change tool lengths for the various electrode sizes. Symmetron allows us to set the tool holder with two parameters, a standard length and an extended length. It will start with the standard tool and use longer tools as necessary. Of course, the down step 
sidestep, RPM, and feed rate can be different for each tool. You may also notice that our re-machines were ready to go, but they were not even needed. The next electrode is quite similar to the last one we just did. We will delete the second rougher that we don't need here as well, and it's ready to post. This electrode is a good example of why I leave the second rougher in place. No edits are required in this one, and it too is ready to go. This electrode requires no changes and it is ready to post. This electrode is a tricky one and will require a few changes, mainly because our finished tool cannot fit in between the ribs. You can see here that the quarter inch ball tool that fishes the electrode is not getting in between the ribs at all. The 1 8 3 machine tool will fit, but the way it is currently set up, it would take it in one pass in the stock and deflect the tool into the finished surface. There are a few different ways we can address this and we will quickly look at both. First, we could edit the 1 8 3 machine tool to look for heavy stock areas and insert roughing motions ahead of the finish motions. This would work very well, but likely would result in a slower cycle time on the machine. So instead, we are going to delete this remachine altogether and use the 1 8 tool as the finisher. Let's edit the finish procedure and replace the quarter inch ball tool with the 1 8 ball tool. We will maintain the multiple tool length option and let the software determine which length tools it will require. When I select a different tool, all of the procedure settings are automatically updated for that correct tool size, such as down step, side step, RPM, and feed rate. All I need to do is just recalculate the procedure with the new tool selected. In order to clear the stock out of the way for the finished pass, we will also need to swap out the quarter inch ball in the second roughing procedure with the 1 8 ball. Here again, choosing a different tool does not require me to change any of the procedure parameters manually. That's going to be it for this electrode and we have one more ready to post. For this electrode, we will just delete the second rougher and it's ready to post too. This next electrode will require a few changes in order to speed up the cycle time. As we can see here, the template would like to remachine between the top of the ribs and the round boss. We know that is already cleared, so we will let the flat tool we are using for the horizontal areas finish it to size. Now that this area is finished, the remaining remachine procedures can be set to only take care of the vertical areas and omit the horizontal areas. We also know that the radius we put here allows for the 1 8 cutter to finish the electrode. So, we are going to delete the smaller tool procedures that are not needed here. This is the parameter that helps control where the tool goes. We turn off horizontal areas and recalculate. I would also like to prevent the quarter inch ball cutter from machining above the highest fillet. We can easily select the geometry on the screen and perform equations and formulas in the parameters input window. Now this electrode also is ready to post. Notice how nice the parallel cuts are automatically oriented along each rib's direction. The vertical areas are all done very nicely with the Z layers. This electrode is ready to post. And another one is ready to post now. This electrode is ready to post, but we could limit the depth of the remachines if we wanted to. 
we could also pick out the top edge with a larger flat bottom tool in place of the small ball cutters. I think you get the idea. A few adjustments and the electrode is ready to post. This electrode is ready to post. This electrode is another one with ribs too close together for our quarter inch ball finish tool. So, we will follow the same steps as before and use the 1 8 ball tool to finish this electrode. In no time at all, we have this electrode ready to post as well. The last electrode is virtually the same as the one we just did, so I'd like to look at a different electrode as our example. This is a tough one. Until I discovered Symmetron, I would not have thought something like this could ever be programmed with a template. It is just too easy to break off ribs on this type of electrode. This type of geometry requires a true top-down approach of machining that most systems do not allow for. Of course, we want to finish all the tops while there is additional stock left intentionally on the walls for rigidity as shown here. Let's see how nicely Symmetron handles this type of situation by watching it run in our machine simulator. First, the top of this rib is machined. It is seen as a horizontal area and it can be done with a spiral collapse, either inside out or outside in. Parallel cuts could also be chosen and if so, can automatically be oriented along the longest direction for optimal machine efficiency. The wall of the rib is seen as a vertical area. We can continuously spiral down it, or we can take traditional Z layers with an S-spline connection on the surface. Either way, we would be minimizing lifts and staying engaged on the workpiece. Notice how intelligent decisions are made to take the cuts down that far and then catch up other towers until the whole feature can be brought down together. This is a true top-down machining, and it is really the only way this type of geometry can be programmed automatically with a template. As you can see, we were able to program 16 electrodes with different geometries with just two different NC templates. Just imagine, how much time could be saved at your shop with such powerful and versatile NC templates tailored to your type of work? Fill out the form below to see a more detailed demo on your real job data and see for yourself.